please take your seats. I want us to look at some scriptures which will help and guide us. Matthew 13. It's like a continuation of what I said on Monday, Tuesday. Yesterday, I came in with types of wisdom that people operate by. And I said there are four major kinds of wisdom. Sensual, earthly, demonic, and divine wisdom. And I said you can be operating all the four. You can be mixing all this thing up depending on what in other words, when it comes to God, you are prayed by his divine wisdom. When it comes to your relationship, you are prayed by uh, uh, sensual wisdom. When it comes to your finances, maybe you are prayed by demonic wisdom. Are you with me? So, if you look at all this, you will know that people have levels they are operating. And sometimes... If you are not careful, you think that you can mix them up. But one thing that God would do is that God will never let you mix his wisdom with all the three. You will have what we call mental torture. So I've seen a lot of people who have what we call uh, disorders in their brain. Because they go to a a word-based church and they move into... uh, I don't know I don't know how to call it quite six and seven book of Moses church and that operated by the demonic wisdom and before long they realized that they are not straight they are looking like they are schizophrenic they, they become weird and some of them go even mental and they begin to operate by um, what we call a disorder in the brain so if you want to understand this thing very well, you should know that Satan is very smart. So Jesus gave a parable in Matthew chapter 13, um, verse number 25, a very common parable, in which Jesus speaking said, whilst men slept. Whilst men slept. His enemy came and sold tares among the wheat and went his way. That's all. Now, what when you read this scripture, it's very dangerous because you see, I can be dealing with. Okay, let me use Fifi as an example. I can be dealing with a demon of poverty that doesn't want Fifi to work, but there's no demon troubling him. So you cast it out, nothing is being cast out because the enemy is gone. The demon is gone. What the enemy left is a seed. It's an idea. It's a mentality. It's an information. So the enemy is gone. But he is still operating by that philosophy. Take your seat. That's one. Two, he said, whilst men slept. In other words, when we talk about sleep here, you can go to physical sleep. And whilst you sleep, you will have the seed of the enemy also planted in you. How? Like somebody sleeping with you in a dream. You are fighting with somebody with keys in your dream. You are in your old secondary school in a dream. Who you are with your village friends in a dream. <laughs> now, what is happening here is that you lost God spiritually. And because you lost God spiritually, the enemy has come in. He's sown his seed and he's gone. So, you are binding a demon 
and the demon is not going because at this level, the demon came with essential wisdom. Am I taking somebody here? He came with an earthly wisdom and he's gone. So, you will see that all doors are closing. You are praying. You are fasting. But the doors will not open. Because the problem is not a demon again. It is what the enemy left behind and went away. Is somebody here waiting when you have, you have gone home? It is what he left behind and went away. As simple as that. And if you read the next verse, he said, verse 26, and when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then also appeared the test also. And when the seed is invested or sown by the enemy, most often, you, the individual, you will not see it. You will not know it. It will lack in your system for a long time until it is time for you to break through. You see that a week for you to break through, you start exhibiting certain characteristics. The time to pray is the time you want to go out. The time for church is the time you decide to go and do your own thing. I was sharing a story. Somebody I gave a prophecy to and I told the person, you will marry this way, you will marry this way, you will marry this way. And the day I was praying for the person, that very day after the prayer, the person went and did something to close the door. The thing didn't manifest until four or five months later. Let me give an example. So an example is, let's say I've told you that no sex before marriage. Are you here with me? You come to church, we give you a prophecy. As soon as you leave, you go and have sex with somebody. The person doesn't want to marry you. Now, after five months, the prophetic word that you marry somebody, the person comes and calls you that I'm coming to marry you. Then a person asks you, I've seen a picture of you and this person. Are you just friends? He said, no, we are dating. He said, unfortunately, that person is my brother. You know, the kind of brother too, their father and mother died. So the, the, the one who is the prophecy, their family decided to take care of this young boy and bring him up. So it is, he can't come back to you. You see, the, you see, the seed, well, sometimes, so sometimes when you do certain things, eh, you don't see the result immediately. The result is for your harvest. When the enemy sold the test, it looks normal. The person woke up, life was normal, things were normal. Everything was going on normal until there were signs of the blade and there was fruit. It is led to one more thing. Harvest to enjoy. Then he saw the kai. Something was so long ago that is only manifesting right now. So you you have forgotten it totally. You have even forgotten that dream. Somebody came to you and gave you an advice. You spent one hour thinking about the advice. Then, finally, you heard a man of God preach and said, okay, this thing is not good, so I won't do it. You never thought about the positive one. But you have taken one hour to think about a negative one. You think you just get up and you say that, oh, I won't do it. It's okay. Now, you have 
the seed has been sown it has been watered and is waiting for your harvest at this rate I know your brain is running around you are looking at some things that the enemy could have sown on our ways so what are some of the things the enemy came to sow I told you but let me go around it again number one counsel advice 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 someone says blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly number two stands in the way of sinners let me tell you this when you see people around you misbehaving and you can't say it you are part of it somebody is showing disrespect to order to honor and you are witnessing it and you cannot speak against it anything you cannot speak against you are part of we are quiet about oh and family home it's not my life it is the person's life then disappear when a bomb is on a person and it blasts it doesn't matter whether the bomb was in your pocket or was in the person's pocket you blast as well if there is money in your uh, coming on you coming upon you and you are with your friends it doesn't matter if they are around you they also get their share is it true it's not true many people i was telling somebody something today and this is very serious that do you know that whilst abraham was busy interceding for lot and his family they were busy enjoying life but they were not enjoying life as they were sinning like the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. No, they were not behaving like Sodom and Gomorrah. But we were sitting with them. They were not practicing what we were practicing. It was by association. The Bible said that the children were virgins. Are you with me? But moving forward, Lord Abraham prayed that God, if there are 10 people in that family, if you find 10 people in the city, save them. So I was telling this person that, can you just imagine? Abraham assumed that we have Lot, right? We have his wife making two, right? We have his two children making four. Abraham assumed that if each one of them had won a soul, by now they will get 10 and you know that if they had 10 people in their family who were righteous that judgment will not have come so whilst you are busy not converting your brother your brother is converting you (laughs) I think I'm not teaching well by the time they left Sodom and Gomorrah, even with the escape by the angel, when they got to the city, one sister looked at the other sister and said that who will have sex with us to have children? Let us get our father drunk so that we can have children with him. So the first one went, got their father drunk, had a child. The second born got drunk. Now, where did they get the information from? From Sodom and Gomorrah. It was planted long ago. They never practiced it. Given the opportunity, they practice it. The condom in your pocket, you will use it one day. That wine, red label in your room, you will drink it one day. That we under the bed, one day you look at it and say, it's getting too dry. Let me just finish this one so that I will not go again. I think I'm not preaching well. That 
short dress in your room. Is the reason why you keep checking social media the next party in town. That's the reason why you are looking for a date. Because that dress must be worn. You have 10 condoms. And you are afraid to throw them away. It's paining you because this one you heard that the style is nicer. So it's paining you to throw it away. Don't worry. The day the girl comes or the guy comes, say, Don't worry, I have one. Don't look at me as if I'm talking to angels. I know who I'm talking to. Is it or is it not true? Look, do you know that if, if you have a Bible in your room, you don't read it. One day something will happen, you open it. Ah, is it or is it not true? Ah. If, if I send you a video, you will not open it. One day you will be going through gallery. As you go, sir, which video you press? Ah, so daddy sent me this. As long as it's a one day, one day it will be opened. That evil that the enemy planted, one day, one day you open it. And most often, you open it when you are close to your harvest. Oh, amen. Isn't it strange the day you are fasting is the way the people cook for you? Why is it that when you need food, food doesn't come? But when you are fasting, food comes. Some of us have had some dreams, right? And we just got up and said, Oh Lord, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. The seed is there. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream in which it meant you become an animal. For one year, he was a human being. So one day he got up and he told his people, What is this thing you are bringing me? Bring me grass. They said, Nebuchadnezzar, this is orthopedic mattress. Said, ah, if the bush is there, what am I doing in the market? The, the, the bed. The next time they realized he, he liked jumping like monkey on a tree. He liked staying in the bush than his room. But you know what? The first day that he had that dream, the process had commenced. Both men slept. I didn't say the enemy, his enemy. Strategically, his enemy. It is strategic. His enemy, his opponent, the one who does not want him to succeed. Yes, I told you that this messenger of Satan came to buffet um, Paul. It wasn't Satan himself. You see, if Satan comes himself, you will know. You will know now. So they will use somebody's face. They will use somebody's face. You can be tuning to TV and an idea will come into your head. It's not a harvest seed though. It's a destructive seed. So now right now you need to start thinking. What have you invested in that is fighting your harvest today? It's a nice question, though. Who demands an answer? Look at somebody say, Are you asleep? I wanted you to think, ask someone, Are you asleep? 
What the person say? The funny thing is that there's nobody who doesn't sleep. But when you sleep, you don't have control of what enters your spirit. But that's a lie. You have. Because your dreams are determined by the circumstances of the things you've been meditating upon. If I decide to be a pastor, I have anti-pastor demons chasing me. Not because the anti-pastor demons want me, but because I chose to be a pastor. Is it true or is it not true? Just like if you decide to be a dietitian, there are certain foods you would love to eat by force, not because you like them. Oh, am I teaching something here at all? So look at something. I'm sure you've been sleeping. And so, as you have been sleeping, what has the enemy been sowing? <coughs> I've, I've heard this thing. Yes, I've even heard some. Where people tell me things like, they don't understand why they can be so zealous, so passionate, ready to do anything for God. All of a sudden, then, they go to... They go, they, they go off. The passion, the zeal, everything is gone off. The answer is simple. What has been sown? So back to what I was saying. That's not walk in the counsel of the God, that's not in the ways of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Sitting where you sit, people you sit with, association. I don't like association is that does not take me to my next level. I don't like it. If you see anybody around me and if you push me to the corner, I will tell you why the person is around me. If I don't know why you are around me, I don't see why I should keep you around me. Why? Because association should become defined. Every association should be defined. When Jesus was choosing his association, as soon as he hugged Peter, he said to himself, the one who will betray me. Is it not true? He looked at Peter and said, I don't call you Peter. I don't call you Simon. I call you Peter. But you know what we do? We allow anybody or anything to associate with us. How? Should I go deeper? Should I go deeper? You meet a person. You don't know the person from Adam. The next time you know, three weeks of friendship, one month, the person has come to sleep in your room. Or you have also gone to sleep in the room. The person didn't come to sleep with you sexually. When the person sleeps, there are demons that come to visit the person. So when the person slept in your room, he has opened your window. I went to sleep in somebody's house to do waiting. In the night, I saw them talking plenty outside. Because I was weak, I didn't get up. By the morning, when I came, say, ah, man of God. There was a big angel on top of our building. Standing there and watching. We thought you saw it. I said, I didn't see it. <laughs> I didn't see it. The next day, they saw it. I didn't see it, but they saw it. So imagine... I carried on a banjo. <laughs> I carried a weird thing and I go to sleep there. The Bible says, He that watches Israel will never slumber nor sleep. Whilst you sleep, demons and principalities, they don't sleep. They watch us day and night. So, Pastor, I didn't let him sleep in the night. He slept in the afternoon. Who says after we don't dream? Jacob slept on a stone, and by virtue of what his grandfather has done on that stone, he dreamt about a ladder. You, Lord, you are worthy. And 
no one can worship you for me for all the things you've done for me and no one can worship you for me here is my worship all of my worship receive my worship all of my worship so can we talk can we talk so you go to church and a prophet lay hands on you a man of God says now listen how many stones did David have to kill Goliath one but he had five five fold ministry all the five-fold ministry has the power to destroy principalities. We just threw one stone and Goliath came down. But hear this thing. First, that one is in First Samuel 17. David had five stones. He just used one of the five. Five-fold ministry. And Goliath was down. So that man of God uses one of the fivefold, whether it's a pastor, an apostle, to break down the demon. Now, as soon as he says you are going to be king, you are going to be great, you are going to be this. Now the enemy can now sit back. He says, So this is what God has purpose for him. This is what God has purpose for her. Now we can't do anything. So let us go five years ahead of him. And let's plant a seed that will grow in five years' time. So the day David was taking the ark inside, second Samuel chapter 6, how many of you remember? That David danced, ah, that he was almost naked. How many of you remember? That the wife complained that all the women were watching naked and David was doing it for the Lord. Guess who was watching him naked? Bathsheba. So Bathsheba has seen. It's a seed. David has not seen. So one day David said, I won't go to church. He's on top of the roof. He too, he sees. So Bathsheba, how enjoyable was the case with David that when your husband came, you couldn't tell your husband the husband. Careful, this thing the king has brought you. Hmm, you please go. He was happy to see the man die. I know that all the calamity and trouble of David was based on Bathsheba. And yet all the mercies of God also was also based on Bathsheba. That's another topic for another day. Because there are some seeds that sometimes the enemy plants that, listen, God has to wait until the time of the harvest so that he will save you. Sometimes you might not even... Now, David's main reason for going naked was not intentional was for the glory of God but Satan had the way of making sure he doesn't go to church for the glory of Satan am I preaching here is it good is it good but I was in the days when all kings went to war David decided not to go to war. Sometimes that is a funny thing because David's mighty man told him that you are too good for us, so don't go to war, stay at home. We will fight for you. There's nobody who can pray better than you. I repeat it, nobody can pray better than yourself. No matter the people that are praying for you, don't let anybody pray for you better than yourself. My pastor will pray for me. That's what you think. We say something in our local language. Nobody drinks medicine for the secular. Let me give you this. You start anything. Anything you start that fights against your calling, your ministry, your assignment is dangerous. It's a plot. I want to marry 
but the reason why I'm not doing what God wants me to do is the person I'm dating. You know why Solomon went to hell? Solomon clave to women in love. He was in love with the women. And the Bible said, at the, when he was old, the funny thing is, that when he was young, give me, is it First Kings 11? When he, when he was young, is it happy no? When he was old, when he, when he was old, that they took his heart away to the gods. When he was young, it was just a seed. He kept marrying them. <laughs> then the enemy waited till when he was old. First Kings, please. He, he loved what? Strange room, eh? Levin for okay. Let's read. Go, let's go. Everybody, read. Go, King Solomon, loved who strange women, whom together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of Moabite, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonites, and Hittites, two of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their God. Solomon claimed to these in love, right. He had what? Say he was surviving. Princess and what? 300 what? And his wife what? Turned his heart away. Verse 4. Let's read. And it came to pass that when he was when he was when he was when he was young they didn't try it. The seed was sown at a younger age. And he harvested it at his old age. <laughs> when he was old, that his wife turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with God, with the Lord his God, as was his father, his heart of his father David. Again, what seed has the enemy planted to affect your harvest? We are quiet, oh. Me don't know, me don't know. Dono, 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 dono. <laughs> when we were young, we used to sing, I'm in love, Ooh, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with my Jesus. Or, or, or Trump will be, the guy is standing in church, I'm in love, 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 who? Not Trump, I got to go to church. The guy will sing, I'm in love, I will do who? The girl understood it. This story only Pastor Victor understands. <laughs> I mean, love who? That girl is so sad. No, sad, no, sad. Can I go on? When he was old, why didn't they do it when he was young? Is it when you are young, you have so much. Capacity, you waste until your capacity is weak. You know what we are going to pray? God, expose anything the enemy has planted in my life. Not today, you go home and pray. Today, I'm teaching. I'm leading you on. If I pray the topic, I can start blasting it in your mind. I don't care, but don't disturb us. If you feel the topic is chewing you, fire. Are praying. You can be masturbating. Nobody sees it. Nobody knows. When you marry, then you see that your partner is not correct. And when they ask you, say that that one is better than fornication and getting pregnant. I think I'm not preaching well. Oh, it's a lie. Am I teaching well? Then clap for the Lord. Listen, one of the things you must know about Satan is. I don't think anybody apart from God has this one than him. Satan has patience. Oh, he has patience. He can wait for you for life. 
play the buffoon, you know, mind you. He knows just when, just when you were to make the one billion dollars, he will show his head. But thank God that God always has a way of what? Separating the wheat from the tares. Oh, you are not here. Hey, are you here? Say, oh Lord, expose every spirit sowing itself into my life. Amen? I didn't hear you. So, someone again. So, if you want your spiritual ambience, atmosphere to change, to affect your habit, give me verse 2. He says what? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight. I, I get grieved by people who, when you try to correct them, they try to give you what you have also done. Or number two, when you try to correct them, they tell you then, I can't do this or I can't do that. You see, one of the things you should understand is that the traffic light that's on the street is not to slow you down. It's to make sure that you go fast. The reason for the traffic light is not for you to slow down. The reason for the traffic light is for you to arrive home fast. Imagine buying your traffic light not working. But sometimes you think that rather the traffic light is there to slow you down. When God talks to you about rules and regulations, it is not to slow your destiny down. It's to make sure that you arrive there safe and sound. But we, people have a mentality that rules that God gives to us is to slow us down. It's never true. I have people who write to me and tell me that how I wish I knew you 10 years back, 20 years back. And if you go deep, what I gave them was simply, this is how you should live your life. The Bible says, a man, Proverbs says, that who has no control or rule over his life, is like a city without a wall. When your house doesn't have wall, anybody can come in, goat, sheep, lizard, cockroach, anything can come in. Is it true? It's not true. When there's no wall, and when you have no rules governing your life, so the Bible said, your delight must be in the law of the law. What does it mean? Um, your delight. The Bible said, um, is that it said, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Now, a lot of the time, when we mention the things of God. People don't have delight. I said, let me give you another word. Delight in Esodoro. Let me give you a key word. Like the taste of God. I'm saying, me, I like the taste of God. No, it is shown by your response. See the money you spend on makeup compared to your offering. It shows your delight. The one you give to the girls compared to your offering. I know somebody who used to collect money from me to use it to cook for the boyfriend. Sister, the sister. And me this sister was not paying tight. I'm not talking to somebody here. You don't even delight in your own vision. How do I know? 
The money you spend on rice, as you said, food, can have you compare to your own vision. Your phone that you are holding is more expensive than all the expenses you've done for your vision. You can't buy mattress to sleep on. But you can buy phone. 10,000 Ghana. And when you sleep on your mind, when you wake up every morning, you're inside. <laughs> and you have, oh God, touch somebody's heart. I need a mattress. The only heart you touch is your own heart. I'm preaching. Give me um, some, there's some 27. He said, I want the scripture, delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires. He said, We don't desire. I mean, hey, today is Wednesday. So today is quite a Say, there a protocol? Today, too. If I don't go there, you'll be angry. Oh, well, well. You know what it means? You don't have delight. And I said, God, you are not giving me. Okay, okay, let's read. Go. Some 37. Read. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee what? The desires of your heart. Read again. And he will give you what? Delight. Ah, good day. It's you I'm preaching. Delight. Delight. It's you. Delight. Delight. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. When we became born again, if you close church, you were angry. I don't know if you were there before. I've been there before. Ah, you close church. But these days, hurry up. To do what? To chase a girl. Because your boyfriend is waiting for you. Sending you a message that I did not close you. If you don't close it, I'll leave you. I say, please, wait. I'm preaching you. You know, half work in the morning, hurry up. And you too, you know, my stomach, so I'm going home. You have stomach. Why have I made a phone throw? Eh? They go and tell the guy, you made me lie to my pastor. Why do you do that? I know things so in some world. They say, God, why is it that you are not giving me the desires of my heart? You are not. We didn't change me home. Someone can watch TV and see Messi or Ronaldo on TV and go and hug the TV. Is it true? It's not true. Someone can stand by the TV and take selfie with the image of that thing for people to know, sir. They did John DiMello, thank you. Some of you have gone with date with John DiMello and Majid Michael in your spiritual realm to extend that you had a dream that you and them had gone on a date. <laughs> Genevieve Energy has gone on a date with you in a dream because you delighted in them and they have to appear by force. Say, man of God. You have not visited me in a dream. How can I? When you always insult me in your mind. <laughs> you can dream. Look, you can think about Jaguar car. Eh? You dream you are driving one. Is it true? It's not true. You see that you are driving one. Because anything you delight in, it has a way of supplying you your need. Am I teaching here? So, back to someone. Should I go on or should I end? I'm flowing, whether I like it or not, I have more time. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. So now, if God calls you to do something, one of the things you need to find out, which laws govern what God says I should do? And you must intentionally search the scriptures. Which laws govern what you should do? Kuma, you are into building. There are laws on building. If you don't they go high. Me, I can't go. Since they went high, I tried here. I came back. There are people who climb electric poles. 
they know the laws they use to climb. Is it true? It's not true. If you think they climb it, you can climb it. Some people can climb coconut tree. Go and try. People climb coconut tree than lizards. There are some laws they obey. There's a way people, if you, if you motorbike, motorbike, how you turn your body when you are turning. You turn the motor this way and go this way. You will see the world. Your body will divide. You think it's like a car. That if you turn anywhere you turn, motor, if you turn, your body must go. I used to have a friend who can we to go for competition. Not me, oh, he. <laughs> At um, there was a club around Osu. He used to go and he can drive motor, come down and pick a coin from the floor. What's that? I'll never try that. Thing. If you put one million dollars in the crown, I don't know the laws about it. If you if you want to work in the bank, there are laws on banking. People don't know that if you work in a bank, you can't date anybody in the bank. If you fall in love in the bank, one must resign. <laughs> one of my daughters is, is dating somebody in the security forces. I told the lady very soon they will come and interview you. They will they will scrutinize you, check your family background, who are your friends, nest of kin, and everything. If they find out that you are connected to anybody who sells cocaine or arm robber. They will advise the one marrying to you to either leave you or resign. She was like, how? Then the guy said, it's true. You know, you know what? There are, in, in, in dream ministry, there are laws to do ministry. I'm teaching you. There are, being a teacher, there are laws for being a teacher. You can't be a teacher and date your student. Is it true? It's not true. Even university, if you date a student, you are in trouble. They are lost. I'm not teaching you well. Uh, it's not true. <laughs> so if God gives you an assignment one of the things you need to find what are the laws governing this assignment there are laws of honor laws of respect laws of favor laws of having maximum returns and listen when you get those laws you must, be, you must delight yourself in it Five years ago, I have one of my sons coming to teach us how to use Kindle publishing. When he, when he came to teach the first time, he was making like 100 to to $1,000 a year. When he came, he gave us videos to watch and wrote, wrote some things for us. Just recently, is it yesterday, he was here to teach. No notes. The guy, go, go, go to this go, go, go to this go to, that thing is no more in a piece of paper that thing is not in his brain no wonder he makes five thousand dollars minimum a month when the thing was on paper this bible that is in a book that you read will only give you hundred dollars a year when it gets into your brain it can give you ten thousand dollars a month And he said, in this law, you meditate what? Day and what? Day and what? Day and night. Because why? You see, what you think about determines what visits you. Yes, you both be the new one back. Why they? Now, let me ask you a question. Who do you think about the first time you wake up? Who do you think about the first time, the last time you sleep? Whose message do you check before you sleep? My business I said. My car is 
Say, Anka, goodbye, and Jeremy. Good night, I can. Hey, Fifi can't sleep. Fifi, why are you tossing your phone? Every five minutes, he's checking the phone. Was not online two hours ago. Three hours ago. And the message you sent has not even ticked. Is, is she with somebody else? You can dream that this girl is working with somebody in Osu. And how this thinking can make you have a dream. And you wake up and you say, I suspect you. The Lord is telling me, it is not the Lord. I'm preaching here, right? Fifi, now we can say no correct. It is not a lot. Me make sure they have more. Me accept the Lord as you. It's not the Lord, please. Somebody asked me that, ah, Pastor. So how do you know this building? I said this building. I designed it myself. Oh. I told the architects where to pass away. I walk through the building every day. Look, when I come, ask the people, when I come here in the morning, first thing, I'm here. Before I go home, I'll, I can walk on this building 10 times in a day. Pastor, what are you coming to do? No, no work is going on. To you, no work is going on. To me, work is going on. Because you meditate, you spend time thinking. So, who should I use an example? Let me use you. You want to be a great man of God. In the morning, what do great men of God do? You start writing it down. In the evening, what do great men of God do? You write it down. The next day, how do I leave it? What are the impediments that can stop me? You know what you are doing? You are gradually putting your spirit into the roadmap of success. But you see, as I said earlier, the enemy sows his seeds. God has planted his own. But the enemy is also showing. So whilst you are doing that, then you hear that this man of God has served God for 60 years. He went home. One day his senior pastor said, Sir God, so should I start my own? Or should I follow? Human beings can change anything. One day I'll be dead. The man of God say, you are sacked. What do I do with my future? You realize that that thing was just news. But it can begin to affect you. Then you start thinking, hey, so would a man of God do it to me? These days? Hmm. Hey. hey you ready? So what should I do? You know what? You are showing seeds. Now you had a dream that me and you, we are not talking. And I told you to go away. So God, thank you for the revelation. <laughs> Am I teaching here? When your revelation? No. I've kept telling you that when don't go there, Acts 10. When uh, friend, Peter was thinking about food. He had a dream about food going up and down. Do you remember that story? When Joseph was pondering whether to divorce Mary or keep Mary, he had a dream to keep Mary. So what you think about will determine what is going to feed your soul in the night. That's what I said. You determine where your soul feeds at night. So he said, you do this what? Day and 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 what? Then what will happen to you? Verse 3. And you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, when you meditate on this thing, what happens is that you make yourself planted in that location. That's why your satellite is now located. That becomes your portal. Your portal. I have so much to teach you. A 
it becomes your reason for everything. Why are you going? I'm doing this. This days you are all this way. <laughs> Don't worry. Why are you all this way? Because that is it. You can't tell me you want to do God's work. And you eat four times a week. You are crazy. You want to do God's work? At least four times a week you must fast. It's one of the laws. Because the one who decides to do God's work has more attack than one who wants to just come to church. Should I approve it to you? That Joseph was hated because of what? Oh, help me. Why was Joseph hated? Because his father loved him and gave him coat of many. Why did, why did Cain kill Abel? Because God accepted his offering. That's all. It's not the envy. <laughs> it is what God had done for him. So the fact that God has chosen you is in that alone is an attack. And it shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of which stream never with us. What does it mean that you never will? In other words, that you are not moved by circumstances. There's some consistency about you. I heard even the neighbors have realized that I sit here every morning. They told someone that today I didn't sit there. They have realized it. By 8.15, I'm there. That is my new office. Especially in the midst of COVID. Free to air. Today I got here around 11. And the people realized that I wasn't sitting there. There should be something which is... Anybody... Let me tell you. A man is defined by his constant. A man can be defined by his constant. There are certain things people just do with They keep doing They keep doing They keep doing That is them. Not the one they do once in a while. That is not them. That is the pretending one. So listen. You will bring forth fruit in his season. You will bring forth what? Fruit in his season. Now, don't, don't forget. And, and, and his leaves shall also know it. And whatever thing he doeth shall prosper. Now, give me back the scripture I quoted, Matthew chapter 13. You see, you realize that when it's your season to prosper, then the enemy brings in what? What he also planted. Now, if what he planted was not something you were meditating upon, it can't fight you. But if what he planted is what we were meditating upon, he fought. So let's look at it. Matthew 13. But while men slept, let's read together. His enemy, what? Came and what? Among the wheat and went his way. Let's go. 26. But when the blade and the, um, uh, was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the test also. 27. Something's happened. So the son of the house who came and said unto him, Sir, did not you sow good seed in the field? Where from this test? Look at what the master said. He said to him, An enemy has done this. Seven said to him, um, He said, and he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will doubt that we go and gather them up? Wait, he said, Let us go and deal with it. He said, Wait. He said, What? But he said, Nay, lest while we gather up the test, you root up also the wheat with them. What did he say? Let both grow together unto the harvest. What happened is that the man decided not to concentrate, feed on the test that the enemy has planted in his life. Are you getting? Are, are, are you getting? I have decided to build this building, and the enemy shows me that you will never finish. It's so easy. I will organize prayer warriors. I must finish. Oh, I must finish. Oh, I must finish. Oh. No, the enemy is only threatening you for you to lose focus. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? So what happens to a lot of us that we start, sort of concentrate and that's why I keep telling that be wary of people whose, whose interest is always to bring up your weakness. Now, anybody who keeps dreaming about your weakness what is wrong with you? There is something wrong with the person. 
But see, there is nobody in this world that is perfect. And I want to prove something to you very soon. Should I continue? Are you sure I should continue? Are you sure? Okay. Let's look at a, an example of a character in the Bible. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10. Say, I need grace. This is interesting. Getting more interesting. Say, I need grace. Now, I told you something that when it came to David, even though the Bathsheba thing, psychologically, the first time that thing took place, that the seed was sown, it was because he was doing something for God. How many of you remember? Number two, he messed up. Number three, he went to God and apologized. Reconciled back to God. And God gave him what we call the mercies of, sure mercies of David. Are you with me? And God even went on to say that your son, Solomon, out of it, will come and rule. Because of how David composed himself. And this is very, very significant. Because you see, the enemy will plant evil things in your life. But I'm going to show you how Peter dealt with it. How Peter and Jesus dealt with it and how we all must learn to deal with it say I need grace so let's read together this is Peter writing do you know who wrote for Peter one day I'll talk to you about who, know, who, who can tell me for 50 Ghana who wrote for Peter if you can't tell me you'll give me 100 Ghana because I sent you the video to watch one Saturday afternoon it means you didn't watch Mark. Mark was the one who wrote. And Mark was not one of the disciples who worked with Jesus. That's why Mark's scripture, Mark, 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 the book of Mark is the shorter for all the four gospels. Because his own, it was Peter who told him on what happened. Peter was not so educated, so didn't care much about details. You remember, I sent you a message by Rev. Bishop Jackie McCullough. It was the first line of that message. Take your seat. So, Mark, who wrote the book of Mark, is the one who wrote this for Peter. He was advising Mark and said, write this. Let's read. But the God of all grace, who has what? Unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ. After he have what? So, say suffering for a while. Now, when the enemy shows the test, I'll prove it to you very soon. You suffer for it. But that suffering must not last long. It's for a while. Will what? Suffer a while. Will make you what? Establish, strengthen, and settle you. So now, when the enemy sows the seed, test in your life, and you don't concentrate on it, they are, can I have New King James to this or NIV to this? What? Uh, sorry, NLT to this. Okay, let's read. Let's read. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will, number one, will do what? Number two? Number three? And what? He will place you on a firm foundation. Now hear me, how many of you want this thing in your life? Let's look at the, the one who wrote this. This is a man that followed Jesus all his life. He was ready to die for Jesus. One day Jesus came and said, Satan has decided to shift you as wheat. But I have prayed. Do you remember that one? Satan didn't just come for Judas. Satan also came for Peter. I don't know if you remember that story. So Peter knows what he's talking about. But I'll give you an example. Now after Peter has walked with Jesus... Jesus had believed him, made him follow him to the garden of Gethsemane, to the transfiguration and everywhere. This is Peter who always would go to prayer meeting and sleep, but Jesus doesn't play with him. There was something unique about him. Satan said, I want to destroy you. I'll fight you. Jesus was telling Peter that Peter, you will betray me. He said, look at Peter. You might not like Peter, but I like the spirit of Peter in this context. He said, do everybody will. I want. You know what it means? He was optimistic about himself. He didn't allow the seed that has been planted to be the subject of his thinking. You know what I mean to most of us? People prophesy will allow it to come to pass. <laughs> Somebody can have a dream. In the dream, 
he and this person were not talking. The following day, when the person does something, you know, say, that's why I had a dream. You are not talking. The dream didn't come for you not to talk. The dream came for you to learn how not to allow it to work. So if you allowed it to work, you have failed. That is why I have a problem with the prophets who profess that they will be playing crash and the plane crashes. Because the fact that you have seen it means that it must be cancelled. Are, are you not getting me? You had a vision that somebody is dying. After the prayer and fasting, the person still died and said, You are a prophet. No, you are not. You are approaching by some spirit else. So, Peter said, Yes, Jesus, you have said it. Now, don't forget that Isaiah says, No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, in judgment you shall condemn. Indirectly. Peter was condemning what Jesus said. Even, oh. 17, Mark or 7. You move from there. Go back to this thing for me. So every, every voice that rises up against you. So now, a voice rising up can be a prophet. A voice rising up against you can be a man of God. Can be a dream. Can be you meeting someone in the street and he's telling you the thing. If you don't like it, you must refuse it. Peter said, no, everybody will deny you, not me. Jesus went on to say that you will deny me three times. Peter still said it won't happen. But you know something? We all know that even though the spirit was weak, the flesh was weak, the thing happened. But you know that interestingly, what Peter did was that even though he was not ready, he went close to where Jesus was through of us. He saw Jesus being beaten. It was when the cock began to crow that he felt that what Jesus said had really come to pass, which means that Jesus was speaking the truth. He was not lying. But the truth is that Peter was not ready for what was supposed to have happened to happen. That is why everybody left. Peter was the only person who was there to watch Jesus. He did it. If it is you, oh, Jesus, there, what can't he? He said, I'll backslide. Let me go and backslide. You are backslide. He said, Man of God, see, remember you said somebody will come in my life when he can't have backslide, but I'll be restored. So you let me backslide, I will be restored. <laughs> Human beings are funny. <laughs> Am I preaching here? Man, but you saw this. Like I told one of my sons and a lady who were dating, I said, I give you both two years. If you don't hurry up and get married, you'll break up. When you break up, it will not be fair. They didn't mind me. Now they have broken up. But you see, the truth is that they should not have broken up. And I talked to him and I said, That you crown who in our kind. That is a funny part of it. What did you do about it? You realize that Peter. Even those, it Jesus didn't say, I want you to leave me. No, he says, Satan has decided to shift you as wheat. He has planted an evil seed in your heart. But I prayed for you. And when you become strengthened, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Okay, but I don't have him. That's a man who is determined that the stairs that the enemy has planted in his or her life will not come to pass. Yes, Solomon should have easily said, yes, I'm married strange woman, but I'm not going to forsake my God. I've made a mistake, but I'm getting up to go back to what I know is right. The righteous will fall seven times, but will rise up again. I mean, may fail, I mean fail. All fail is fail. We just kiss. And they say kiss is a sin. Yeah, let me finish up. The way he has seen my nakedness, I must also see his own. Atika, atika, atipo. You can't see my own and I won't see your own. So now you are thinking, when will I see this one's own? You are seeing my own. God, this one there, it's not fair. Oh. It's not fair. God, you must do something about it. It's not fair. I must see some. You see, you are thinking like that. You are meditating like that. Oh, very soon you reap your harvest. I think I'm not preaching well. This message is for is for stadium. This message. <laughs> Am I preaching well? So, Peter, you will leave me. 
all of you will forsake me. But when, why didn't Jesus tell all the disciples that he was specific that Peter, you are the one Satan is going to use? Peter said, it will not happen. He took a knife. You might not like his disobedient spirit taking a knife. But you realize that the guy took a knife because he was ready to not allow that thing to work. The only thing that he did, he should have, he should have added a prayer. He took a knife. When they cut the ear, so Jesus take the ear and put it back and said, you are fighting me now. I'm fighting for you. you are... Then they took Jesus to a place that were beating him in the room. He was there. They sent him to Pilate. He was there. They sent him to Herod. He was there. He kept following wherever they took him. So the cock, if the cock had not grown, I'm sure he would have followed on to the cross. But when the cock crew, they remember that yeah, Jesus said that the cock will crow three times. Hey, the cock will not crow once, and I would have denied him three times. I said, the cock, the cock crow, crow. He said, yeah, it's three. I've done three. Let me not wait for four. I don't know whether you're understanding me. You know, sometimes people see evil in their dream and they make it come to pass. And they said it was born to happen. No! In the spiritual realm, it is always a blank check. It can always be changed. I said it. Mary could have said, I don't want to give birth to the Messiah. God will look for a new virgin. Judas could have refused not to be the betrayer. Satan will look for the next person. It was supposed to be one of them. <laughs> But whoever availed became it was a blank check. Nobody's name was put there as the one who would be the betrayer. So if God says you give us money to do his work, nobody's name is there. You can decide to put your name there. You didn't hear that one. Oh, amen. So if you have any search, I will never decide to give me the next one, please. Verse the next verse quickly. There's, there's 44. This one, it goes past 60. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you ever know me. The next one, 35. Then Jesus, no, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the disciples vowed the same. But you know something? I like the spirit of Peter. You sometimes you don't even understand why Jesus chose such a person as a leader. You know what happens to us in our days? We allow the test that thing the enemy has planned. When you, you know very well that this person you are not talking to is the reason why you are not making it right. You know very well that you are not associating well with this person is why you are not succeeding. But you've seen it in a dream, in a vision. But you will not even do what you need to do to succeed. It means that you don't even want to succeed. Anytime I don't make a girl on the pen now, you so you will still do it. Me preach power. You know, God will forgive, yes. But you should have noted that even though you'll be forgiven, the consequences of the effect is always real. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. 36. As long Wait. If you go on, you see, it is not every day. Listen to words very well. When anybody tells you whatever you want to do, do. The person has put you in trouble. Yeah, now PBR. You know that in the, I read this thing again and again and again. I was surprised that for Jesus came to them in the Garden of Gethsemane and said that. So you could not tarry with me for one hour. Second one, so you could not tarry with me for one hour. The third one said, "Go on sleeping." Are we? They can't give us that one. The third one, he did. 
He said, go on sleeping. The hour has come. Give me 45. If Okay. Then he came to the disciples and said, go ahead, sleep. Have your rest. It's, it's interesting. He was no more waking them up. He said, now do it. First, I told you, don't. Second, I said, don't. Third, he said, keep on sleeping. I do this often. You have moved out of the perfect will to the permissive will. Do what you want. Eh? But he said, I can do what I wanted. It's not a, that is not a license. So that is danger. When I read this, I said, ah, so sometimes I behave in a certain way. I didn't know it is biblical. I'll tell you, don't. Uh, you know, based on this thing, article this and this and that, and, and, and my mother says, and my father says, everybody says, I said, go. At this rate, it's not me who says go. The people say, so go. So Jesus said, go ahead, sleep, have your rest. But look, the time has come. Man said, we didn't say sleep. Oh. He said, have your rest. He said, sleep, but some rest. Come. I'm not talking to somebody here at all. Now, we know this story. Peter said, after you have what? Suffered a while. After you have what? Peter suffered. You know why he suffered? He couldn't see himself doing this to Jesus. So what did he do? He went to the other disciples, other ten, and said, let's go fishing. And whilst he was there fishing, Jesus came there and said to him, John 21, Children, have you caught any fish? They said, no. He said, cast your net to the deep. They cast the net and they caught another fish. When Peter lifted his eyes, it was the same Jesus. Then he said, let's go to the seaside. When they went, Jesus has cooked some fried rice and chicken. I was there. The fish was not just tilapia. Catfish was also there. Roasted one. Red fish was there. Assorted. Peter sat down. There was even shrimps. The big one. A man who was, look, who was suffering to catch fish in, on the seaside to the extent that he has to move all his dress naked, no pants, to show that the guy was suffering. Jesus came in one word. It happened again. They asked him, do you love me than this? So when Peter said, after you have suffered a while, he will restore you. Peter knew what he was talking about because Jesus did it for him. Give me the end, end new King James. See, Peter knew, when Peter was writing, he was as if, Peter, you what I do you know? He knew because he, after he had betrayed Jesus, like, like in the case of um, 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 David, that should have been their end. But you see, a person who wants change is a person who, when they see that they've made a mistake, they put in a, an effort to correct the mistake. They don't blame things, they don't put it on things, they accept their folly. Like David did. Peter had the call. Crow, 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 crow. He told the disciples, the only thing I know how to do is catch fish. The one who said, you make me fishers of men. I've denied him three times. Let's go and catch fish. Jesus said, I'll come to you. He came to him. Because why, why did Jesus come to him? Because in the time of the harvest, you must separate the wheat from the tears. Let me tell you this. 
if you want to very go very far with people, always separate the problem from the person. Hey, this is a serious statement I made. Though. When you mix the person with the problem, you'll be a, you make a because see, Jesus was able to know that the enemy came to plant. the curse to fight the harvest. What the enemy came to do to Peter? To destroy Jesus' harvest. Finish. The enemy's purpose was to make sure that Judas was with Don. Let me tell you, I always tell you that it's not everybody we can pray for. A Judas who has nothing to do with your life, who has been stealing your money, there's no need praying for him. A Peter who can take the work on to the next level. But suppose we pray for Jesus said, I won't pray for Judas. But I'm praying for you, Peter. So that you be strengthened. And Peter said, I suffered a while. Tears will make you suffer. But if you trust God by meditating on his will, his purpose, his assignment, after you suffered a while, he will perfect you. I thought you said an amen. amen. He will establish. You know what to be established? When you come to the place of establishment, everything you do works. Oh, do you know do you know what I'm talking about? Some people are blessed by God. If they sneeze, it becomes a new sneezing style in town. Oh, it's not true. Should I mention one for you? When I was coming to church, I saw that Bishop Obinim has gone to talk about one musician. And it is, what's the name? Black. Hey, and it's trending. I mean, let me say something. Don't trend. Don't trend. <laughs> it is trending. Boba <laughs> cry. I'm not talking to somebody here. That is the, when God establishes you, if you sell tomatoes, you'll be rich. If you sell onion, it will be rich. You can even decide to sell only water. People say, ah, this guy, the energy he sells is rich. No. He has established you. But before you establish him, he will perfect you. He will restore you. And then what? He will strengthen you. Some say, I need strength. I need strength. That's why we're going to take communion today. He's going to strengthen you. Why did Jesus come back to Peter? To strengthen him. Because the guy had given up. Was it his fault? No, it was the tear. When the tear was, Peter was always sleeping at a prayer meeting. And it is when men slept that the enemy came to sow the tear. You are in church. Let me give an example. Especially those of you who go to Deliverance, Deliverance Church. Let me tell you something. A lot of your demonic problem came from that church. Whilst you are there, the pastor is casting out demons. They have not called you yet, so you are sleeping. <laughs> Go! Pie! 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 By force at once! Pie! 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 It's me this Miko or Koiva. Past men slept. Praise the Lord. Eba, sorry, not me. You're free now. I'm here. I said, yeah, come. But I said, yeah. Yes, me, you're fire brought. Ah. You're too fire brought. Abao. Am I talking to somebody here? May God restore you. May God establish you. May he strengthen you. And the last one. May he settle you. This one brought tears in my eyes because see, you know what it means to be settled. I say you have worked all your life and you are going on retirement. The company gives you settlement benefits. That's when God looks at everything you've been through, how you suffered for his name's sake. And he said, because of what you've been through for my sake, I'm giving you this. They can say, may God settle you. I didn't hear you. 
One of the ways God can settle you is by giving you a good wife, a good husband, a good business idea, a good what? Good children. God has a way of settling you. That's when you receive certain things that you don't struggle for. You don't know why, but God did it for you. And it's because God saw that you have suffered for him. Now, if you are suffering for God and you are complaining, you are activating the tears, not working on the wheat. So let them grow together. Let me keep my focus on the wheat. When the time of the harvest comes, I will divide it. Jesus did exactly that for Peter. He allowed the tears to grow. And sometimes it's very difficult for you to watch the test grow because it has been shown already. You can't do anything about it. Let it grow. You can't do anything about it. It's gone. As long as I am breathing I will Is it a good teaching? You have something to go and pray about when you go home. I know. I want you to pray that Lord establish me, restore me, strengthen me, and settle me. Tell me, Lord. Somebody's breaking you down, and yet for the sake of God, you just keep your focus. God will settle you. For the sake of the ministry going on, somebody's not talking to you, but you are making every effort to talk to the person so that the work of God will go on. God will settle you. It looks like your pride is hurt. It looks like you've lost it, but God will settle you. Yes, and the two knowing now, name Yakasa. The two knowing now, yes. That is what a person thinks. But that thing will make you suffer a while. But he will settle you. How many of you are suffering because you are serving God? Let me show you up. This communion is for you. Maybe if not for the fact that you are serving God, maybe you'd have been rich. Because you know how to add zeros and take zeros. You could have been married. People's husband would have suffered. Thanks for saying the truth, my daughter. God have mercy on you. <laughs> Thank God she's saved, else we are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Such people, God always has mercy on them for saying the truth. <laughs> Please, are you here with me? Sometimes you can see that this is a door for you. Just one touch. A car is yours. But because of Christ. The Bible says in is it first Peter five one or so? Let me look for it. It says, As long as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. Arm yourself with this same mind. And one person who spoke about this thing very well, about arming yourself, is this same Peter who said, After you have suffered a while. Okay, it's good for one. Let's read. For as much as what Christ has what suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with likewise with this same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. The word sin there is Amasha. You don't miss your mark again. You hit your targets. And this is the same Peter who came later to write that after you have suffered a while, he will settle you. Now I want you to look at 
the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, even as you take this communion. You are telling God, you suffered for me. I don't need to suffer. You said to Peter that you will establish him. You will perfect him. You will strengthen and settle. Give me an NIV for it. I want these four things in my life. In this coming month of August. I want these four things to work in my life. Even as I fast and pray. Lord, I want to be settled. That's why people laugh at you and say, look at your life. You say you serve God, you are single. And before, pa, three months you have located. Six months you are married. They say, ha! Somebody calls somebody in the church and says, he has left the church because here we don't marry. From that time, people started marrying very fast in church. That's what sometimes God does. He makes your enemies to laugh. And when they are laughing, he says, let me prove your laughter to be wrong. After you have suffered a while, will himself restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Pray that prayer as you hold your communion. Lord, I know I'm not perfect. But I know I'm not the best. I know Satan wants me. I know Satan has decided to sift me. He's doing everything to have me in his corner. But Lord, like Peter, I will struggle to be in your corner. I might deny you. I might betray you. But in my heart of heart, I long to be with you. Sometimes you see people fall and backslide and still God comes to visit them. Because God knows in their heart of heart that if not for the tears, that would delay them. They will still have gone. Their attitude, you, simple thing, you not go to church. Simple thing, I've stopped church. Simple thing, come and take me to church. Your heart is not like that of Peter. Jesus said, don't follow me. You will break my heart. You will listen, I'm following you. As high as the heavens above the earth, so are your ways to man. Your ways are perfect, they never fail me. I know you are good all the time and through the storm yet I will praise you despite it all yet I will sing sometimes it's good Sometimes it's bad, yet I will worship, yet I will worship. Come on now, and you remain the same, King of Kings, as far as the heavens, as high as the heavens above the earth. So high are your ways, so high are your ways to Your ways are perfect, they never fail me. I know you are good. Come on now, all the time. You be good through things. But through the storm, sometimes what to eat, how to survive the next season. We have to control ourselves lest we abuse people. True good of our worship. You remain, you remain the same. King of kings, 
let me speak to you. Tell him, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. You are the voice of hope, the rancor of my soul. Where there seems to be no way. You make it possible. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Come to me. Add me. Listen to me. You are going to make a, keep singing. You are going to make a lot of money. Be faithful to God concerning supporting his work. God will bless you. God will bless you. Close your eyes for me. Lift your hands. Up. You are the voice of hope. You are the voice of hope. Man, you are the voice of hope. You are the voice of hope. The anchor of my soul. Let that grace find him. Where there seems to be no way. When I don't see what to do, you know, when I don't see what to say, you make it possible. You are the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace. Add me, adversity. My lips will shout for joy, shout for joy. To you, the most. Like Peter, and through the storm, yet I will praise you despite it all. That is Peter, yet I will sing in true good or bad, true good or bad, yet I will worship. Come on now, you remain the same, King of Kings. Speak to me, Lord. You are the voice of hope, the anchor of my soul. Where there seems to be no, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to say next. If you make it possible, you are the Prince of Peace. I miss. Adversity, my lips will shout for joy. My lips will shout for joy. Shout for joy. For you the most. Lift up your communion. You are going to pray one last prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, like Peter, I will fight, I will pursue Christ. To the, to the last breath no matter what the enemy has decided to do to my life I will pursue you I know that even if the cock will crow even if I deny you even if I fail even if I fall and I still pursue you you will restore me you will strengthen me you will establish me and you will settle me I'm ready to go through it because I want you to restore me to establish me to strengthen me and to settle me. Lift your voice and begin to pray on your own communion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
They laugh at you. They mock at you. As I as the heavens don't stop praying. I above the head. <laughs> so high your ways to mine. So let them keep laughing. Your ways are perfect. And I know that way will never fail me. I don't walk through sensual wisdom, demonic wisdom, or earthly wisdom. I know you are good all the time. So, Lord, through this storm, you can't take my praise from me. You can't take my God from me. I might be crawling. I might be crawling, but I'm getting up. Yes, I cut off the ear. Jesus didn't like it. But I'll still pursue him. He said I should take care of the disciples. I will take care of them as I know how. I'm not going to abandon them. I'm not going to leave them astray. That business you have assigned me, Lord. I'll continue in it. That work you have given me. I'll keep going in it through it. Because I know you will settle me. I know you will establish me. Rabbi Keto Sapedo, Kati Bedo, Sigi de Bidi 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 <laughs> Leave the bread up. If it's in your mouth, don't worry. Say, Lord, your body was broken. You were ripped. You were bruised for my transgression. You were chastised for my iniquity. The punishment that can bring me peace was upon you. And by your stripes, I am healed. Lord, if you were bruised, for my transgression. I don't want any transgression to ever follow me again. If we're chastised for my iniquity, no iniquity can follow me all the days of my life. The chastisement that you went in was for me to have peace. Then, therefore, I need a peace, all the peace required to make me succeed. By your stripes, I am healed. I therefore does not see why I should have a pain, should have sickness, should have problems in my body. As I take this body, make me complete in you. Now, Lord Jesus, this is your blood that was shed for the remission of all sins. As I take in your blood, my DNA becomes your DNA. I will think like you. I will behave like you. I will talk like you. I'll see like you. I'll feel like you. I'll not walk in my senses. I'll walk by faith and not by my senses. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for me on Calvary. Thank you for forgiving me my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your communion. David, I forgot these verses. I rest in your unchanging world. Start again for me. You are the one. Begin to thank him. Thank him for what you have received tonight. Thank him for what you have received tonight. 
Iniquities cannot follow you. Transgression cannot follow you. Sin cannot follow you. Your peace you will receive because of the chastisement that came on him. Arrest, arrest, arrest. I rest in your changing world. True. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. You remain the same. You are the voice of hope. command tests that they cannot have effect on you command your mind that from today you will meditate on things that will not bring you to your next level you make it I know Pastor David, Pastor Tony Dems will tell you that or Pastor Victor, those who are following for long with me that they've heard me teach about this one for years. But this one they've never heard before. You know why you've never heard before? Because the first three days of my fast, I decided to go dry, which I've not done for years. And when I went dry, praying for the church, this is some of the message God gave me. And the Lord told me that he's about to do these four things in people's life. Restore. Strengthen. Establish. And settle you. Now you know something? The thing is this. No matter how much you fall, like Peter, pursue what God told you to pursue. I don't know why you understand me. If, no, just keep pursuing. You, you, you came to put the basket here. Pastor said, you are, you are crazy. Put it here. Put it here. Yes, sir. Peter cut the ear. Jesus put it back. He still followed Jesus. Because he was bent on making sure that that prophecy will not come to pass on his life. But at all, it came to pass. But he physically did what was humanly possible. That's where we fail. That's where we fail. But it's not true. Now, the Bible said in the scripture where the God of all grace, the God of all grace, the God of all grace. Say, Lord, I do the human possible like Peter did the human possible. I sow my seed into this prophetic word. Strengthen me. Restore me. Establish me. And Lord, settle me. This August, settle me in this area of my life as I sow this seed. Now, tell God, don't let anybody hear it. Maybe you want God to settle you in the area of marriage, childbirth, health, business, ministry. Tell God, this is the area I want you to settle me. It's a simple one. You are not sowing your seed for scattering's sake. This is the exact area 
I want you to settle me. This is the exact area I need a new job. This is the area I want you to settle me. I'm not going to pay rent again. This area I want you to settle me. This is why I'm showing the seed. I'm not showing because pastor said show a seed. I'm showing because I have a harvest and there are tears that are competing with me and I need grace. If I don't get your grace like you grace Peter to still come and look for him, I will miss my harvest. Father, thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing to your kingdom. Let this the offering, which is a system of withdrawal on what we have deposited in our accounts, be fruitful in all that we do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Mighty name.